He's not hated enough for my taste. <laughs> that, that's the problem I have with last night. I need my, I need my Roycey to be hated universally. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm afraid you've gained too much uh, acceptance, Patrick. What well, is this going to do to you? I don't know. I've had another twins function today. There are press conference uh, uh, that they have on the Friday of Twins Fest or whatever yeah. the hell it is. And uh, yeah. yeah, I got a couple of shots from Falvey and Baldelli for that. Uh -huh. Okay, good. <laughs> He's back. Good, yeah. good, good, good. good. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You so, did issue the great cheap I shot, though. These. I want these guys to cringe and get PO'd when they see you waddling into the... Uh, Kenny, you'd the love it. Last night, yeah. that is the Herb Carneal Award winner. So last night, Patrick uh, is talking about his favorite team, which is the 77 team, Rodney and whatever. And he said, oh, we just lost Soupy Campbell. 400 innings in three years as a relief pitcher. He looks right at Rocco. Did you hear that, Rocco? Yeah. A relief pitcher. <laughs> 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 nice, Gracie. Nice. <laughs> Uh, Rocco took it okay. I was talking to him today. So, anyway, yeah, uh, this uh, this event today is uh, just kind of a luncheon where they really tell us nothing. So they told us Joe Mauer is going in the Twins Hall of Fame in his first year eligible. So that's not a big surprise. I don't no. think that's a surprise. No, 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 no sir, no, no. Sir. I didn't get to see it last night. I had to attend an event, but the. Uh, Apparently, the Wild had to sound like the old days of the Broad Street Bullies. Yes, yes. It must have been unbelievable. They, uh, three fights that happened almost simultaneously. I guess. Yeah. I, plus, when I got home, there would have been time to watch the last couple of minutes, but it was one of those games where you had to pay. I couldn't yeah, find it on TV. Oh, no, it was it's a ESPN deal. Well, I couldn't get it. Why does the NHL do that? I don't They've got to know people aren't do, uh, watching them. Yeah. ESPN Plus is that? Yeah, yeah. The, when I yeah. when that came up on my screen, it was requesting my payment information. Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't have any payment information. There are there are creative people who get around that, but we're not going to go into it. So everybody, speaking of brawls, I, I did a column for the. Uh, the uh, hockey day is in White Bear Lake, right? Yeah. And White Bear Lake, of course, immediately for you brings up Moose Goheen, right? But, Absolutely. Uh, I you, you knew Moose, right? Indeed. Very. Lake. Live three Way doors down. down. Live three yeah. doors down. Yeah. Like, well, I it brings to mind Billy Butters for me, so I, I wrote a column about Billy, who's become a very good Christian man. Uh, it was not always us. No. Of course, had. Had some of the greatest brawls in history. He told me one uh, that you could find on the internet. I think it's only the audio, but uh, they're playing. The Saints are playing a playoff game against Hartford, and Harry Neal has Jack Carlson. He has Butters, and he has that uh, black and E or whatever. They so he's got three goons, right? Right. And he he doesn't play any of them in the first period. And Glenn runs down from the press box and says, just screams at Harry, get those three guys on the ice on the first shift and beat the hell out of them. <laughs> and the, the fight lasted for 32 minutes. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> 32 minutes. It's all it's a famous crawl. And, uh, and basically, Butter started and he just saw Larry blew it. Blue, P L E A U, remember him, Larry Blue, just punched him and all <laughs> Just came out, sighed and punched him. And I, 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 got, I got a couple of thoughts about this hockey day in White Bear. If I'm not mistaken, the location of the, of the games is about uh, Interstate 35 and Highway 96. There's a, there's well, some. Polar Lake Park. Or something. something. I, why in the hell didn't they make the rinks on the lake? I think I'm with you. Know, let's make it old time hockey. Day. That's not white bear. That's uh, I don't know what the hell that is. Yeah, we've got some ice issues this year, guys. And when okay. it came to Moose Goheen, every fish I ever caught off the end of the dock, the old man said, "You got to walk over and show that to Moose." <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Moose was 
by then, Moose didn't have much excitement in his life. He wanted to look at the situation. Well, that was a, he lived in a summer only cottage. You know, Moose was a lineman for NSP. Well, that's what he did after uh, done being the greatest yeah. hockey player in Minnesota history. My old man said he could skate faster backwards than anyone could skate forward. Huh. <laughs> oh, he was a uh, legend. You know what else he was? I looked him up. The World War One. Guy, yeah, uh, really? signals uh, officer in World War One. I, I think his Ruck verify this. I think his name is Francis Xavier. Francis, Francis I, Xavier yeah. Goheen. I think yeah. it is Francis Xavier, yeah. but it is Francis for sure. And he yeah, had a I kid who was a good hockey player. A kid is probably now eighty or whatever. Johnny Goheen. Mm -hmm. mm. Francis well, Xavier. Yeah. I knew Goheen. The, I knew you knew the moose, but uh, yeah. Bill Butters takes me back to watching White Bear Lake. Uh, great football team in 1969. He was the fullback. And I said to him, how come you didn't get recruited? He said, I ran the 40 in about 10 slaps. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was, speed was not his uh, number one asset. But, uh, boy, they had, that used to be big out there. Do you know they're building it, it since they closed that Mariner High School out there? Yeah. They they kept the building and their ninth and tenth graders go to one high school and their eleventh and twelfth go to another. But they're merged they're spending a lot of money in merging it and and I guess next year or the year after they're gonna do it like everybody else does. Does that old hippodrome and white bear still exist? That's where they played hockey. There was an old building where they played hockey. That's got to be gone. That's got to be know. gone. I think my kids played there. Did they? I think so. It was, it was super old. Yeah. They had a, a really, a very unique Zamboni. It wasn't, wasn't a regular it, Wasn't it uh, ice that was just frozen by virtue of nature? I don't think they had any machinery. Of that I, I don't know. I think it was just outdoor ice inside a building. How about this? Goheen was a member of the St. Paul Athletic Club team that won the United States Amateur Hockey Championship and received the McNaughton Cup in the 1915-16 season. After that season, Goheen enlisted in the United States Army, served in the European Theater during World War I in the Army Signal Corps. After his service, he returned to St. Paul Athletic Club and won a second league championship <laughs> at McNaughton Club. Oh, my point. beer. I'll be right back wow. after I solve this war. <laughs> hey, Suits. Yeah. What? Fish did you catch that you are most proud to show movie? <laughs> the little, is little purchase, no. Size was no, I do remember one time showing him a pretty good bass. Oh, really? Taking a, a bass. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's a good one, Joel. That's a, you keep your you get your mother to cook that. <laughs> yeah. So God, I would have loved to grow up three ducks doors. Some old guy's famous. Yeah. Nope. Royce, uh, you're right. I looked up this fight on YouTube um, with the Saints and the Whalers, and they don't have video of it, but the guy doing the play by play, it reminds me of something you would have seen on the movie Slap Shot. Yeah. Oh, I mean, God, it was yeah. just absolute mayhem. What are um, the play by play guy was? It was the start of the second, <laughs> evidently. It was the Hartford and, guy that they, oh. they, they, they got that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Punch Larry oh. Yeah, there was all sorts of sucker punches going on. And, yeah, it was just fantastic. Well, this is, you know, the Broad Street Bullies were like in their heyday then. And everybody was trying to boon their way to the league. And then the WHA was trying to get fans to come to see the brawls. He told me, I didn't get this to Nicola, but, uh, you know, he later on was playing against Don Moore's team down in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And he said, he was, I think he was with the Whalers by then, Butters, but uh, they came down there and Sonmore had these guys, these fans that sat behind their bench and they wore Nazi helmets. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Jeez. They were there to see the fights in the Nazi man. helmets. And he had uh, Gervano, Villadu, beat, uh, he had uh, Jack, uh, Dave Hansen. And Jack Carlson, I think, maybe Jack. He had four. Germano was insane. And he, he had all those goons down there in Birmingham, and which was Glenn was in heaven. Here's a guy who became sober, became the greatest crusader for sobriety of all time. But there's nothing he liked better than two hockey players kicking the crap out of each other. He was unbelievable. Oh, God. I think it's Dan from Minnesota. Dan Minnesota. Yes. Dan Minnesota. Yep. I think he had a name for the snowplows. 
Oh, that I thought was a great name, Glenn Snowmore. Glenn Snowmore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, he was one of the one of the best things I did. But Glenn was getting ready. Glenn was kind of getting a little diggy and was going to go live with his sister in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And they had a going away party for him out. In the, he was staying in a facility in a senior place, but a nice apartment. And they had kind of a meeting room out there and they brought, they were having a Glenn going away party. And all these old golfers and all these old things and everybody showed up. And you got the stories you could have written a novel. It was a book. I mean, not a novel. It would have read like a novel when yeah. you started telling Stan more stories. So. Yeah. Are you going to attend Hockey Day? No, I've done my duty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not especially if it isn't, if I can't see the shores of White Bear Lake, why would I possibly? Man, I wish they would have had that on the, on the lake. I don't, I, yeah. I, I naively assumed that's where they would hold it when I heard it was going to be in White Bear. Yeah. It's, uh, and I know I we got ice problems, Kenny, but you can flood the lake. What now? I'm listening to a fight here. <laughs> give, us a little, give us a little of the noise there of the fight, will you? Let's get it. There's something like 108 minutes, uh, 108 penalties. Kenny, what, what was it? Getting? Dirigible that blew up the Hindenburg. Hindenburg it sounded yeah. like the guy talking about the Hindenburg. <laughs> oh, the tragedy. There's a couple of different uh, things on uh, YouTube. One, really? The one that we just played is called Brawl at the Mall. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Kenny, the, the, they say the official tally was 32 minutes of brawling. <laughs> wow. <minutes>. Wow. <laughs> Glenn, wow. Can you imagine today's hockey fans dealing with that? Oh, my God. Their brains well, would explode. Glenn, Glenn also had the greatest NHL one ever when we weren't going to take the Bruins crap anymore. Right. I think, you, know, were you, you, were, you remember watching that game? Yeah, it was I in Boston. Boston. It was in Boston. Yeah. The, we, the, 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 uh, the North Stars had never won in Boston. Our guy was <laughs> And they start, then they fight at the faceoff, right? Yeah, the minute just, the puck was dropped. Yeah, as soon as it hit the ice, all the gloves came off. Yeah. Glenn Sadmore for commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be like Blackfire being the commissioner. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yes. That'd be spectacular. Yeah. Jeez. Louise. Well, anyway, Patrick, what we got this weekend? We got uh, the uh, football. Oh, oh, that's right, the playoffs. Oh, two great games. Two great games. The point spread is uh, the uh, Chiefs are only one. I uh, Chiefs are only one. I but think. that that point spread in the Chiefs Bengals has changed four times since Sunday. Because the you know, Mahomes apparently looked good walking away from the podium, so now it's gone back up for right. the Chiefs. But, uh, I like Cincinnati to win the game anyway. Me too. Not that that makes any difference. But the Eagles are two and a half. I think that's too many, don't you? I do, but it's still a seventh round rookie quarterback. Philly at home. Uh, I'm liking Philly. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, right on. But two, they will. They will be uh, emblematic of this season. Two uh, nut cutters, as we used to say. Yep. So, it was a two close one. But all year, the NFL has uh, been able to survive on close games, and they should be two more. Yeah. Well, very good, and congratulations yeah. again. Way one quick run. thing. One quick thing. Yeah, I promised sure. Kenny I would do this. Uh, this was tweeted out from a guy I follow who tweets about the twins named Jeff. He found a great Pioneer Press Patrick Royce television okay, commercial. Okay, stop right there. Yes. Pat, do you remember when they were doing television ads? I don't. Yes. They did for one for you and one for me, right? I guess, but I don't remember it. Well, he says yes. this is from 91, but you were already at the party. No, yeah. no, I was already. That was 87. Oh. Was like a year later, and right. Deborah Howell never forgave me. Right. Okay. I told you the Deborah Howell story when she oh, brought yeah. her back. When she brought, they brought her back to the Star Tribune to be a, a guest speaker. And I said, Deborah, and I put my hands out, and she said, Get away from me, you bleeping bleeper. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>
<laughs> this is 10 years later. Right. So, Pat, the, nice to be loved. The best part about this 30 second ad is the fact that it features Mike Lynn, Clark Griffith, and Louie. Are you ready? Pat Royce yeah. has some pretty strong ideas of how sports should be played. Royce, the guy's a hack. <laughs> and he doesn't pull any punches. He doesn't know a typewriter from second base. He tells it like it is. Royce, he's a close personal friend of mine. Pat Royce. <laughs> Read him in the St. Paul Pioneer Press Dispatch. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The best oh. part, Royce, was the little wink, the sly little wink he gave the camera. You know how Can long that, that out? Took? Yeah. Like three hours. Come on. This is all I got. Let me go. I was like, go. What is my motivation? <laughs> <laughs> you need New York. You need yeah. New York. You're a crisp. You're crumbling bacon in the frying pan. <laughs> yes. 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 Hey, uh, hey, roller back and take cut three. We're <laughs> getting it down now. What was with Louis wringing the neck of a newspaper? He had a newspaper rolled up in his hands, no, but I he was. Think it, I think he was. It was supposed to be a satire of him telling me he was a close friend. Friend at the same time, he wanted to joke. Me. Yeah, that's that's exactly <laughs> what I got. Mike well, Lynn, uh, yeah. the, the, the no, Mike work. the Mike Lynn grin when he calls Racy a hack is perfect. You could tell he got a lot of pleasure from that. <laughs> yeah. Joe and I would both agree that he is the most underrated treasure we've ever had. Wood City Sports Park. Oh, absolutely remarkable, Mike. Yep. Remarkable, Mike. Joe gave him that name. So. Yeah. I think it's a short for Mar Remarkably Slick, wasn't it? What's your first call? Remarkably Slick Mike Lynn. On <laughs> <laughs> Remarkably and Slick. Yep. Yep. So yeah, you have to be part. somebody in this market. Yeah. So <laughs> much so that Mike Lynn came to you two with the Community <laughs> Protection Act. Protection Act. Well, we thought we had the biggest scoop in the world. Under wraps, I, yeah. there, I think we ran two graphs. I, <laughs> I think I got a graph. <laughs> We thought we were going to win the Pulitzer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we were summoned to his house. We were. It was, it was the best thing we ever had in life. The Community Time's Protection gonna, Act. The Times is going to be calling us to be investigated. You know, I think I, I was your producer at the time. I think you even said, Rook. We we can't let you in yet. We don't. We can't give you the full. Yeah. No, I'd not. like to tell you, yeah, I, but, but I can't. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. God Almighty, that was a beauty. Oh. All right, all right. See you later. See, see you later. All right. All right. Uh, Kenny, I remember the day um, the announcement was going to be made that Royce was going across the river, and he actually called me up at Maplewood looking for you, Such, mm -hmm. because he was trying to track you down so he could tell you personally mm -hmm. before you found out over the media, well, uh, through the media. I'm like Deborah Hull. I never forgave him. Um, if I remember right, 